Harriet really doesn't like this desk anymore and she says it takes up too much space in her room. And so now she's not keeping anything on it or in it. So I guess I have to make her a new one, a smaller one. So I drew this one up in CAD just to speed up the work in the workshop because that way I don't have to think about how long all the pieces are going to be. I'm going to put this together with floating tenons and I'm starting by cutting the mortises in the ends of the pieces of wood. And then make sure to do the cutting mostly in one direction. That way the bit always deflects in the same direction and I get less inaccuracy from bit deflection that way. And I'm cutting these off center in all the pieces because I want this to be flush with this side here. So basically they're all the same distance from this edge here so that this will be flush. But that means all the pieces are a little bit asymmetrical and I have to carefully keep track of which side is which so that it all works out in the end. And I didn't bother setting a stop on the slot mortiser for how to position these because lining up with the lines is a little bit less error prone in terms of getting the pieces switched around in terms of what goes where. I'm using a half inch rotor bit to cut those mortises and the fun part of this one is it removes material really quickly. Those mortises go really fast. <coughs> I had turned off my air cleaners for some of the filming but the dust was getting to me. The nice thing about those air cleaners is they don't just clean the air, they also kind of blow the dusty air away from where I'm working. Now to make the floating tenons. I started by resawing some slices off some pieces of hardwood firewood and now cutting them to the right width. And then planing them to exactly half an inch thickness, uh, checking the thickness between passes to make sure I got it right. And then a quarter inch round over on all the corners and that makes the edges a half inch round overall. And cutting them to a length. I always like to cut them so that they're almost as long as the two mortises are deep so that they bottom out on both of them, hopefully. Then sanding a bevel around the edges on the ends, uh, that'll make them easier to put in, but also prevents them from scraping the glue out as I insert them, I think. I need a thick long piece of hardwood for trim for the front edge of the desktop, and for that I'm using a piece of hardwood that I actually milled from a log just last year. It's already dry enough by now. I have to straighten that on the jointer because it was a little bit distorted from the sawing and from the drying process. Then cutting a rabbit on one edge using two cuts on the table saw. This will allow it to fit around the plywood that will form the desktop. Cutting the piece I need out of a big sheet of plywood is awkward alone, but I like to cut it in such a way that all the scrap is going to be contiguous so to have maximum flexibility for using the rest of it. This piece is a trim for the front edge, but it also helps to reinforce it and it gives me a nice solid piece to route a round over onto. Then using my marks to position holes for pinning the trim onto the plywood. This is a wooden jig just for this purpose. It's only for this one job. It'll be worn out after that. And the corresponding set of holes into the trim. I'm cutting some small dowels from 5mm bamboo skewers and sanding a tape around to the end. That will make them easier to line up when I put it together. I got a lot of surfaces to spread that glue over, so I gotta work quick. And as is often the case with a complicated glue up, uh, getting it together is a bit of a panic because that glue sets up quickly and if I don't get it closed in time, I'm kinda screwed. I'm using clamps to help pull that together, but it wasn't enough, so I had to hit it with a hammer a bit. And then getting some more clamps, and uh, more pounding it, and more tightening the clamps, and more moving them around, and more pounding it. Ugh. And then I got one of my bigger clamps, which can push a lot harder. I'm not entirely happy with how that came out. Uh, mostly the ply was sticking up a little bit here. And so I tried to smooth that transition with sanding, but uh, I went through the veneer, because the veneer is very thin. So this had been the first time I tried this technique and for the second one I offset my jig a little bit on the plywood which would force the plywood a bit further down and also made the rabbit that it fits into a little bit deeper. And the glue up was a bit of a panic just like last time though this time I had my clamps closer at hand.
And then I noticed one of my tiny dowels wasn't going in the hole, it was actually starting to buckle. And there was really no time to fix it, so the only thing to do was to get a big pair of wire cutters and cut it out and then squeeze it together. So this one came out better. This edge is pretty much flush without me having to work at it. And you'll notice my dowel alignment uh, marks are not lined up with each other. That's because this hole and this edge are not perfectly lined up, which means they're all offset a little bit, but they're all offset the same way. So the fact that this trim ended up moving by a few millimeters really didn't matter. And then starting to assemble the side frames, first by gluing the floating tenons into the ends of the uh, long pieces and pushing those all the way in, then gluing into those pieces that they join into, but my tenons were a little too long. No, no. But it wasn't too late yet. I was able to get that back out, shorten it on the table saw, and then glue it back in. And this time it closed all the way. Now on the other side, I had a harder time closing that joint. Uh, possibly it was tighter, but also my glue had more time to set already because it took longer to apply the glue because I had two tenants to do it to. Now routing roundovers on the edges of the pieces. Now it might make sense to do that before assembly, but I like to do it as late as possible because that way I get less chance of digging up the roundovers. Also, that way I won't accidentally put a roundover where it shouldn't be. Now I couldn't reach this part here with a router, so I'm putting the round over on that one just with a hand plane. With the legs inset on one side, I was about to grab a palm router to route the vertical part of this, but then I changed my mind. And instead I just raised the router bit a little bit above the table, so it would be the right height for that offset part. But I couldn't route all the way to the corner, so finishing it off with a chisel. Well, I screwed up a bit. Uh, these two pieces are supposed to be mirror images of each other. They're both right-hand sides, so I'll have to take this piece and flip it upside down. Only problem is, on the top, this sticks out a bit further than it does on the bottom, so I'll just have to cut them both shorter, top and bottom. Now I need to make some kind of bracket to go between the legs, and that'll be the part that holds them vertical. I'm cutting a triple tenon on the end of a piece of 2x4 using my box joint jig and I like using that jig for that because it's really fast so this is actual speed of cutting that triple tenon. And another triple tenon on the other end. I wanted some hardwood pieces for those tenants to connect with, so I just used a big piece of firewood and resawed some flat pieces out of that. And cutting the triple mortise in that piece with my slot mortar sir. Uh, this right now is playing at double speed, but we'll play the rest of it a bit faster. Looks like it's a good fit and applying glue. Unfortunately, a lot of surfaces to cover. And with glue on those surfaces for this long, makes it hard to get together. Too tight. I sanded the mortises a little bit wider on the next one, which made it much easier to assemble. I made the tenons on this part a little bit longer than this part is thick, because I could always just sand it flush afterwards to make this nice and flat here. But because I had to hammer this one closed and with the tenon sticking out, I couldn't close it all the way. Whoops. And this bracket is just going to screw onto the leg assembly to hold those vertical. I thought about trying to use some knockdown fasteners or something like that, but realistically I've never had the screw holes wear out from wood screws.
But I wasn't entirely sure about the strength of this joint, so I added a reinforcing screw across it. Plus one at a diagonal that kind of screws to brace the corner. Kind of difficult to put in, but uh, gives me a bit of extra confidence. I'm cutting notches in the side pieces so they can fit around the trim at the front of the table. And this is where my big 26 inch bandsaw is really handy because I have enough elbow room, I don't have to worry about hitting the post on the left side. Now this desk doesn't have any drawers, but I made it nice and open on the bottom. That way a generic drawer unit like this thing that actually came from the curb could fit under there easily. And I built this to be just the right height for a 7 year old, but I figure in time she'll grow so when the time comes I'll just glue some blocks to the bottom of the legs like this to bring it up. Now I decided to build two of those because in this room I've been messing around with embedded controllers like a Pico or ESP32. And I've been using this table to have some of it set up and some of it right here. But that's not optimal, so a shorter, wider desk would be just right for right here. But these sides would make for a desk that's a bit too low for my preferences. But I want to put wheels on it and that'll bring it up to the right height. Except the wheel is a bit wider than this, so I need to add a block right there. And another screw up. I filmed myself gluing the pieces on here, but then I realized, oh no, this is the outside and I want these blocks to be on the inside. So I was still able to get them off and I re-glued them on here. Now I was just going to scrape the rest of that glue off of here. I put sawdust on it just to make it more visible and make it easier to get off. I'll have to get the part under the clamp later. And for now I'm holding this one together just with some clamps. It has to come apart for varnishing anyway. And who's this guy here with the fancy camera? Well he's actually Mike Heenan from CBC TV. This is the third time in all these years of doing YouTube that a local TV station has actually taken interest in what I do. He wanted to film me filming stuff for B-roll for a bunch of interview stuff and uh, he just accidentally walked into frame so I said hey now you get a cameo and he's okay with that. I still need to varnish these things before I put them together properly, but I'll leave that for now because I have another furniture project I need to do soon and then I'll just varnish it all together. And part of the irony is that Harriet wanted a smaller desk because she's jealous of Kurt's toy desk that I built for him for last Christmas. And I built that one for Kurt because Harriet got the nice big desk, which she doesn't like anymore.